Hey guys, Josh here. Welcome to my materials list, and I'm gonna be talking about my, ter my, my materials today. Uh, an in-depth kind of um, explanation of what I use, what I tend to use, what I've learned to use over the years for charcoal drawing specifically. Um, I also do other paintings and drawing types, but today we're just gonna go over the essentials when it comes to charcoal drawing. Now this, this doesn't mean that, um, that you can't follow along if you have other materials. From, with my tutorials and it doesn't mean that these are the best brands or anything like that it's just some of the stuff that I use and um, so um, I'm gonna put a list at the bottom of the video um, and you guys can go ahead and check out any types of materials that you guys want to pick up yourselves so we'll start off with what I draw with this right here is the go-to I use general's charcoal just because I'm familiar with it I think most different types of compressed charcoal are usually pretty similar um you can only draw with it figure it out a little bit before you get too familiar with it so this is 6b this one's 6b and this is compressed not willow not vine or anything like that it's compressed and it's also a large piece usually they come in um pieces like let me find one real quick in a piece about, I'd say this size. As you can see, this one's a lot more wide. It's much wider. And I prefer these because I can put down a lot more tone and grip it nicely when I'm drawing. And um, yeah, it's just it's useful for me. There's an extra wide or large or jumbo or something like that, I think they're called. But yeah, just general charcoal. It's pretty cheap. I always have tons of it on hand. I have this cigar box that I use to keep all of my charcoal pieces in because I only use two types of charcoal. So the next one I use, go to the free charcoal, like the freehand charcoal is um, willow charcoal. These are the two sizes I have. And I keep them together with the, with the compressed charcoal because you can usually feel how light they are and Kind of the texture is a little different, so you don't, I don't really confuse them often. This is the thinner one, and this is the thicker one. I usually snap them before I work with them, and I sand them down to get the right angles that I want to work with. Now, willow charcoal is really good for sketching, and it's really good for drawing. You can even do a whole drawing with willow charcoal, but I tend to use um, willow charcoal for the beginning of the stages of a drawing, especially a, like a figure drawing or something like that, like a life drawing, and, um, and it wipes off pretty easily, so... Um, let me show you, this is a smaller piece, a broken piece of willow charcoal. So if you use willow, you could still get nice and dark. Here, let me make it a little lower here. Nice and dark. And you could also kind of control it. Work lightly. But it also wipes off pretty easily. Without an eraser even. It doesn't stick to the paper all that good. So I try to use, um, I try to stay away from this if it's like a, like a, a long drawing. But if it's like a fast gesture type drawing or kind of abstract drawing, I like to use the willow charcoal. A lot of people, instead of willow charcoal, they use vine charcoal. Now vine charcoal is really good. It's very similar to willow charcoal, but it tends to be a little more silver, a little more gray. It doesn't get as dark and it wipes off a little bit easier. And I like to have those rich blacks in the drawing. And I could, I feel like I could get them with the willow charcoal and I can't really get them with the vine charcoal. So I just normally stay away from that. I haven't seen too many vine charcoal finished drawings, but I've seen quite a few willow charcoal finished drawings like um, Zin Lim, I believe, uses a bunch of, bunch of this and he kind of uses only compressed in the details. I like to use compressed from the beginning of the drawings too sometimes. So this is just some compressed here. So if you can tell the difference here. It gets really dark, but it also gets kind of grainy. But um, you can fill in, get super dark, right? And it doesn't erase as easily. It doesn't wipe off easily, as you can see. But it blends nicely. I'll talk about the blending stuff in a bit, but I usually try to blend it out like that and pull that tone to create intermediate tones. You could also blend the willow charcoal, but it's, you don't need to blend it as much. Like you could probably use your finger for it. Um, just be careful if your fingers are oily, you don't want to damage the paper with the oils of your finger. 
What I'm drawing on here is Strathmore 400 series drawing paper. This is for a 14 by 17 sheet. I usually use an 18 by 24 inch sheet. I believe it's 80 pound. It's um, it's a solid drawing paper. It's, it's pretty cheap, not too expensive um, to make a lot of drawings with, but you can still have like a, like a finished quality drawing on this type of paper. Let's see. So now we'll go on to the pencils. These are my go-to pencils. This one's broken, but I'm going to show it anyway. So we've got General's Charcoal Soft 4B. It's broken, of course, you can see that, but I, I like to sharpen them with razors. I'm going to have a tutorial up for you guys that shows you how to sharpen a pencil with a blade so that you could get this like kind of like a long exposure of the of the charcoal so you can use it for tone and stuff like that this one's kind of dull i'm going to need to resharpen it it's not long enough either but um yeah so this one's 4b it's compressed charcoal very useful it's the same thing as this although this is 6b it's just in a pencil form which is useful for when you got to get into the fine details really that's pretty much what it's for i don't really use them all that much for like larger drawings Honestly, I, sometimes I don't even pick up a pencil for a drawing, but um, the pencil extender really helps, especially when you're getting down to the bottom of the pencil. The thing with these pencils is that they break really easily, especially if you drop them, they'll break from the inside. So every time you sharpen them, they'll, the, the lead will fall out. Now, a lot of people use like the HB, the 2B, the 4B, the 6B of the, of the charcoal so that they can control their darks and lights easier. If you have a 4B, that means it's pretty soft. It's not extra soft, so it's not gonna the lead is not gonna break as easy. But the softer, for those of you that don't know, the softer the pencil, the darker you can get with it. Because if it's harder, it leaves less material on the page, which means it's it's um it's lighter overall. And if it's softer, it'll leave more material on the page, which makes it darker. So the way I use a pencil is that um, if I want to make light lines, I just kind of use it lightly and control and kind of develop this control of um, creating a lighter area that with tone, you can blend it out if you want, without having to rely on like a 2B or an HB or a 2H if you're getting into graphite and stuff like that. Instead, just knowing how to control, have a dark pencil so you can go dark when you need to, like that. And just kind of controlling in between the in-between tones. Not so much relying on the pencil you're using to make, to decide whether something is dark or light. You should be able to develop your skill enough to be able to press hard or kind of develop these layerings of of material to make something dark and then lightly use a technique to make a light value area. So that's why I only use really one or two types of pencils really, but <clears throat> very useful as well. Here's a, a newer compressed charcoal piece, also General's charcoal. As you can see, these are the different sizes here. I usually break them down anyway, but I like the thicker size personally, but they're both very useful. You could get away with either one. Okay, so that's the charcoal I use. Let's get into pan pastel. This is what I get questions about most because pan pastel, not a lot of people know what exactly it is. It works really well with charcoal alongside charcoal and blends with it well. So here, I'll, I'll lift it up here and show you the bottom of it. Pen I only use black. Um, they sent me a lot of other colors, but I still prefer the black mostly, of course. And so this is pretty much pastel in a pan form, obviously, but I have this palette knife that has a foam tip. And this foam tip is replaceable this one, as you can see, it's kind of dark and dirty. Let me see if I have any extras. I have some right here. So I replace them with these. Whenever they get too dirty or they rip up or anything like that, they wear down pretty quickly. But um, you could go through a couple drawings with them. 
And so you just dip here and you're able to create a whole area of tone, kind of like you would be using the side of a charcoal stick. The only thing is that it's a little bit more beneficial since it doesn't blend out all that much. And you get this nice, soft, really rich black with it. And it's really useful because it doesn't get all over the place at the beginning of a drawing. Like if I'm trying to make um, the shadows of the eyes, like I'll make some eye, quick eyeshadow here and then a nose shadow there. Like that. Like you can press lightly and get a nice even tone. And it's, it's smooth. It's a nice foundation to work build off of with charcoal. It's a really nice new thing. I, I think it's mo pretty new. So this is called a soft palette knife. And I think you can get these on Amazon if they don't have them on like a, like a local art store for you. Like Blick has them. I know like Michaels and Hobby Lobby don't carry these, at least just yet. So this is, sometimes I make a whole drawing with this. The thing is that you can't get too detailed when it comes to these things because they're flimsy at the end a little bit. And you know, it's, it's foam. Not so much like you're drawing directly with the pastel. So, and it works good with, along with charcoal. You can layer the charcoal on top, detail it out, and then erase it out with the kneading eraser just fine. Okay, so let's get into the kneading eraser now. This is a kneaded eraser, at least part of a newer one, since it's kind of gray. They're so useful because this, they're very powerful when it comes to lifting, lifting off the page, lifting material off the page. They can lift pretty well. They don't lift completely everything off the page. So you still need to be careful where you make your marks and be intentional about that. But the cool thing about a kneaded eraser is that if you pull it a bunch, it cleans itself pretty much. Not always, like after a while, you're gonna have to like, uh, let me see this here. Here's this one, this is an, a new kneaded eraser. This is an old kneaded eraser. And no matter how much I pull this one, it has so much charcoal in it that it's gonna stay black. It's not gonna put anything on the page, but it's still, um, it still erases decently, but it's gonna get firm and it's gonna start disintegrating. And um, another very useful thing about these is that they don't leave crumbs. When you have these like white erasers, this mechanical eraser here, if I go in and erase this, do you see all those crumbs? Now if I go in and use this one, absolutely no crumbs, which is amazing I think, because then I'm like, okay, how am I gonna get these crumbs off? I'm gonna try to pull them off, but only some of them are gonna come off, and then I gotta wipe and ruin the drawing really. So, because I'm blending where I don't want to blend pretty much. And the knee eraser also does a good job blending. So when um when you're erasing with this, you could actually form the tip into a chisel shape or a shape that you would like if you want like a very fine fine lines to erase. Or you can make it into like a round shape if you're trying to let's say pop in um, some a light area like on the nose, on the forehead, something like that. So super useful. That's my go-to eraser. Pretty much the only eraser I use besides this detail eraser. Mono Zero Elastomer Eraser by Tom Bope. It's really useful. It's a mechanical eraser. It, it comes in this small size. You could get different sizes, but I think this is one of the smallest sizes you can get. So I can get these like details. If I'm trying to like do some highlights of the eye or things along that matter. Super useful. It does leave crumbs, but obviously not that much because it's so small. Um, I would not recommend this for like a big, erasing a big area all that much because then you're just gonna have like a very stripy look unless that's what you're going for. I know some artists are very good at using that. Well, there's also these like foam things that you can get with, um, with the pan pastel. I like to use them sometimes. You could just dip it in the pan pastel and then kind of get these like also big ranges of tone. They, they leave these like weird edge marks, so I don't use them all that much, because then you have to get rid of those. Like if I'm using that one. But it's a nice blending material, like if you just want to make like a nice gray tone over the whole thing, it's nice. Um, let's see here. Next thing that I can't go without, 
paper towel. This is an old one I haven't replaced in a long time. I should replace it. This is, used to be just a kitchen paper towel. And I used it kind of like a chamois so I can like blend a lot of things together and make a couple like maybe artistic abstract marks. Um, it's useful. You gotta be careful with which brands you get and stuff like that. Some of them are soft, some of them are hard. You just kinda gotta like experiment with them, see which ones you like. I'm not too picky about which paper towels I use. Some people say use a chamois. I'm not too big on that, but I mean, if you prefer that material, that's, that's cool, that works. So paper towel, especially if you wanna unify the entire drawing. That works awesome. This is a, I don't even know what it's called, but it has sandpaper on it, a sandpaper pack, pad probably so um, you tear the sand paper off when it's done but it's on the last one here the reason this is important is that if you bring let's say where's my pencil if I bring in this see this is a lot more exposed lead here or charcoal on here 4b soft if you bring it in here and you rotate it while you press it against the sandpaper like this you could eventually develop a nice sharp edge, a nice sharp point to get to those details that are shape the charcoal you're using on your drawing so that you don't have to like get all these uneven lines. Like for example, if I had this um, piece of willow charcoal here and I held it against this so it doesn't sit flush with the paper, you're gonna get two lines here, one here, one there with one stroke. And if you don't want that, you can always rub this down a bit and then eventually you get a little closer to, a little closer to like, you know, that flat whole surface of the, of the willow charcoal meeting the paper. So that's what's good with, um, with the, the sandpaper. I do also have this mechanical eraser, like some cheap one. I don't use it all that much because it leaves so many crumbs, but it's very useful because it's very strong. Here's some compressed charcoal powder. A lot of people think that when I'm using the pan pastel it's charcoal powder, but it really isn't. And um, I don't use it all that often because it's less controllable than, than the pan pastel. So I usually stick to the pan pastel instead. So next, this is the fixative I use. Grumbacher Final Fixative, it's a gloss. It works awesome. You don't even see that much of a gloss on the actual drawing. Make sure to spray it outside so that um, you don't get all the fumes inside of your studio, your place. And do a couple of coats. Wait a few minutes in between each coat and you'll get a nice finished, solid drawing without it blending out too much. It will still get damaged if you wipe your hand across the drawing because it's charcoal still. So. You need to be careful with your finished drawings, even if they're fixated, fixative did. <laughs> so um, um, I haven't tried the matte one from this brand. I've tried a lot of other one, other brands, like the Krylon brand, which really ruined my drawings. I think Grumbacher and Windsor Newton ones um, are worked very well, but all the other brands I've tried so far, not so good. So I kind of try to see. I got this one at Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby. I try to stick with this with this brand when it comes to fixative. Very useful, very important. So let's go into the easel part of things with the drawing board. I believe I got this drawing board, I wanna say at Blick Art Material. It's just a, a pretty basic drawing board with the clamps up there like that. You could also just use a piece of uh, like chipboard maybe, depending on how strong it is, or other types of wood. You can use um, these large clips like, like I have back here. I have those clips on the ends right there. Very useful, especially if you're using a larger size paper that is larger than, this holds up to 18 by 24 comfortably. Everything else is a little bit too large for it. Um, this is a 14 by 7 sheet, 17 sheet currently on there, so you can see the scale from that. This, um, this easel is from Hobby Lobby. It's, uh, the basic wooden easel. Not too expensive, pretty simple. 
Don't need anything fancy. I also have this tabletop easel right here. Useful for the smaller drawings or if my wife wants to draw while I'm drawing as well. We don't like to draw on flat surfaces <clears throat> for the reason being that if you're drawing on a flat surface, you have, let's see, let's for this for example here. If I was drawing on this paper here, I wouldn't be able to see this drawing properly because whatever's closest to me is gonna be larger than whatever's furthest from me is gonna look smaller. So if I'm drawing just kind of from this back perspective, unless I'm really leaning over it, but from this back perspective, it's gonna kind of warp when it comes to how I'm seeing it. So I have, I have it straight on with my perspective then I'm actually in a little bit of back tilt. I'm able to see the top and the bottom of the drawing from the same perspective without any warping at all. So that's very useful. That's why it's very useful to have a, an easel. I got this like, I forgot what it was called, like this trio set here of, um, it, ro it rolls around. It's really awesome from Ikea. Super useful, I have my brushes for painting and my paints down there and then all my drawing stuff up here. It's super useful. This is just another drawing board I have here. Another style of clipping the paper down. Useful as well. So those are my main materials that I use, my, my kind of go-to materials. They're all very inexpensive and very basic. You can find them at most art stores, except for I would say the Pan Pastel which even then is not so necessary because you can replace that easily with like a compressed charcoal or a willow charcoal. You just have to learn to use the material properly, that's all. But if you guys have any questions, please comment them, let me know, shoot me a message. I'll list the materials that I have in this video at the bottom of the video, I believe, or wherever it lets me. But thanks for, thanks for hanging out with me for a bit and for listening to me ramble on about how I draw and what I use to draw. Thanks, guys. See ya.